Welcome. Thank you for being here to learn about Mobility Master Plan Area Focus Number 8, which is focused on preparing for climate change. My name is Jamie Skimming, Manager of Climate Change and Energy here at the City of London, and I'm part of a multidisciplinary team working on the Mobility Master Plan. In this short video, you will learn about some of our goals for the future, as well as policies and actions that can help us achieve them. Climate change can affect London in several ways. There is the increased chance of severe weather, including flooding, high winds, freezing rain, and extremely hot temperatures. There's also the increased chance of warmer climate diseases, like Lyme disease and West Nile virus. There's also potential increases in property insurance costs. Some of these impacts are being experienced today and others are anticipated to affect London in the future. They will only get worse if strong collective action to curb greenhouse gas emissions worldwide are not taken immediately. London City Council declared a climate emergency in April 2019 to combat and reduce local greenhouse gas emissions. Here's some background facts. In 2019, before the COVID pandemic, there were almost 1.2 million weekday trips being taken here in London. Most of these were by personal vehicles and often with just one person in them, the driver. If we continue business as usual and London's mode share remains the same, the number of car trips could increase by 50%. As London is expected to grow significantly, there will be more cars congesting our streets. Providing increased access to other mobility choices such as public transit, bike lanes and sidewalks can help alleviate some of this congestion and help London reach its climate goals. Our role as part of the Mobility Master Plan is to look at policy changes and data collection programs to help us create solutions that make them more viable. Our first goal is for London's mobility system to do its fair share to help London meet its goals for community-wide net zero emissions by 2050. Everything that you've heard so far about the Mobility Master Plan, getting more Londoners walking, biking, taking transit and carpooling, helps to reduce emissions from transportation. The Mobility Plan doesn't cover everything to do with transportation-related emissions, though. The Mobility Plan is focused primarily on trips that Londoners take within London. So all the emissions associated with Londoners taking out of town trips, as well as trucks bringing goods to and from London will need to be addressed somewhere else. Our second goal is to make sure that our mobility system is ready for future, where our weather is expected to be warmer, wetter and wilder. We have already heard from Londoners that for walking, more trees would help during the summer months when we were seeing much hotter weather due to climate change. One key policy that will help the Mobility Master Plan succeed with this goal will be to continue to apply what we call a climate lens to all the decisions that we make. The climate lens framework aims to integrate climate emergency issues into decision-making processes across the corporation. Important documents like master plans need to incorporate climate change aspects, both mitigation and adaptation during their renewal or creation. It's not a binary stop-go style decision-making tool though. The Climate Lens Framework helps city staff identify and consider the climate change implications of municipal services. Understanding these implications ahead of time helps us to avoid what could be expensive fixes later on. So let's talk a bit about some of the goals associated with the framework. We want to ensure that climate change considerations are part of our overall decision-making and evaluating existing practices. We want to establish a process for accountability and tracking of tr these climate change considerations in our decision-making. And we also want to increase the awareness of climate change issues for decision-making across a corporation. The Climate Lens Framework helps to determine how much information is needed to understand and assess the climate change impacts of a project or activity. In many cases, these impacts are easy to understand and can be assessed quite quickly. In some cases, though, impacts may need further study, either by specialists who work for the city or by outside experts. Specifically with mobility projects, the climate lens framework will be used on future individual projects. Projects that receive federal and or provincial funding often come with requirements for studies related to climate change impacts as well. 
To do the best job possible preparing for change, city staff need good information to help us make good decisions. As the saying goes, you manage what you measure. Getting up to date and regular information about how Londoners move about town, as well as those trips that Londoners take to and from London that can have a big impact on emissions, will help us see whether we're on track towards shifting towards sustainable modes of travel. City staff also recognize that achieving net zero emissions by 2050 will require the use of zero emission vehicles and fuels. City staff will be working with London Hydro to develop an electric mobility implementation plan. This includes supporting the growing use of e-bikes and e-scooters as another option for traveling around London. These micro-mobility devices have the potential to replace many in-town trips that are currently taken by car. The goal of the Mobility Master Plan is to have Londoners walking, biking, and taking transit more often. However, emissions associated with Londoners taking out of town trips, as well as trucks bringing goods to and from London, will also need to be addressed, not to mention aviation related emissions. Zero emission vehicles, such as electric vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, will help reduce the remaining transportation emissions. Electric vehicles are expected to make up most light duty vehicles while hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are more likely to play a role in long-range freight transportation. The federal government has mandated that all new vehicles sold in London need to be zero emission vehicles by 2035. The city, with the help of London Hydro, can support the adoption of zero emission vehicles through measures such as minimum electric vehicle charging requirements for new buildings, encouraging the transition towards having more EV charging stations, and other policies that are supportive of electrification, including all the required infrastructure. In summary, reducing emissions from transportation comes down to driving less and driving a zero emission vehicle. As you've heard from others already, there are many other benefits for London and Londoners for having fewer vehicles on the road. We invite you to learn about all eight areas of focus for the Mobility Master Plan and share your feedback with us as we strive to create a future where everyone has access to the options they need to move through our city with ease. Thank you.